Welcome back to the Student River Podcast. I am your host, Luke Stokes, and uh, I got a little uh, more dressed up today for this. I realized last time that uh, two episodes in a row, I wore the same shirt. Now, that was completely inadvertent, and you know, it's one of those things that you don't realize it until you're reviewing it in hindsight, and I didn't want to re-record it, uh, but I figured I would try and make up for uh, going back to back uh, and uh, do something a little bit more, a little bit nicer. So got uh, got my nice shirt on today trying to improve my reputation. Speaking of reputation, that is what we want to talk about today. Reputation management. Um, this is something that I don't see talked all that often about from a standpoint of how to manage it. Although I see a lot of people talking about the frustration of of managing your reputation online. And there's almost this helplessness, this apathy towards online management reputation. Like it's just, it is what it is. And you're at the mercy of what other people are going to say about you online, whether it's accurate or inaccurate. And I want to debunk that a little bit today. Today, I want to talk about what you can proactively do to manage, effectively influence your online reputation and what people see, your potential clients, your potential student families see when they Google search you, when they look you up online to figure out what you're all about. You no longer can get away with anything. If you think about it, in in generations past, and you don't even have to go generations past, you can just go a couple decades back, there wasn't a lot of transparency in the way we operated business. In other words, the way a certain business operated or treated their customers or the quality of the product that they have, other than word of mouth, you had really no insight into it unless you just had a personal experience and you walked in there. You know, um, you can look at restaurants, for example. You know, unless someone told you that a restaurant was good or told you like, hey, don't go into that restaurant, you really didn't know. There was no such thing as, you know, review engines for, for restaurants. You know, um, I don't know exactly when something like Yelp came online a decade ago, two decades ago for sure. And so now you just, you can't get away with having an average program or mediocre customer service or an unimpressive experience. Like that just doesn't fly. You're going to get found out eventually in this super transparent world. I live in this little town here in Washington state called Leavenworth. And we have a unique tourist economy here and we have a lot of restaurants. Now we're a small town of like 3000 people, but we have an abnormal amount of restaurants here in, in our little town because of the amount of tourists that we get. And there are good restaurants and there are bad restaurants. And because of the popularity of these online review engines, you're slowly seeing those with mediocre food closing their doors because you have to perform today. You have to provide a product and experience and environment that that people are attracted to and can talk about online or you just don't win. You just don't win. And so I know it can be annoying as an owner to have anybody out there say whatever they want to say, whether it's true or not. It's super frustrating and I've been there, but it's not going to change. We're not going to move away from allowing the, cons the, the consumer, the customer, the client to have a voice online. We're not going to go the other way. As consumers, we all now seek to know what that star rating is. Whether you're buying a product on Amazon, whether you're going to a restaurant or a hotel, whatever it might be, you look. You know, what is the star rating on Amazon? What, what does Travel Advisor say about this hotel? You know, and... and you you put some stock. Now, we can't put all the stock, and I'll talk about that, but you put some stock into what the consensus is on a brand's performance. It's just the reality. You know, in, in my last company, um, 
prior to prior to this adventure that I'm on now was a surfboard brand called Degree 33. And we had to proactively manage our reputation for that brand because our product was surfboards. And because our primary consumer was beginners in that space, there is a lot of mismanagement on taking care of a surfboard. And if you're not familiar with the surf industry, you know, it's it's a it's an industry with a product that is very fragile. You know, so bouncing it off of rocks and cracking it or having it being, uh, you know, the board being broken by a wave is not an abnormal experience for a participator in this sport. And so consequently, we were having beginners going out and dinging and banging their boards, breaking them, and then leaving negative reviews online about how our product was no good because it broke. And so we there was this constant struggle to keep the voice in public opinion, positive. So I get this experience completely. I understand how frustrating it is to have somebody, even though they may be saying something that is somewhat accurate, to distort it and paint the picture that that puts you in a light that isn't fair. I get that. So if we want to talk about reputation management, meaning our ability to control the the narrative online. What are some of those key factors to controlling that narrative? So the, the, the I'm going to dive into four. So there's four narratives to controlling. There's four narratives. There's four topics on controlling the narrative that we're going to dive into. They are monitoring and managing the review engines. I'm going to talk about Yelp and Facebook and Google, and there's local engines too. So I'm going to talk about um, how to monitor and manage what's taking place there. I'm going to talk about creating a process to encourage positive reviews being left so that even if you get a negative review, it's overwhelmed with positive. Uh, I'm going to talk about creating partnerships in your local community so that you have uh, other people with reputation speaking positive about you. Uh, And then the last piece that we're going to touch on is managing customer expectations. Because ultimately, when someone feels so wronged that they need to go online and shout about it, it's because we as a company, as a brand, it didn't meet their expectations, right? So we're going to talk about managing their expectations so that they never get so far out of line, so far off kilter and frustrated that they feel that they need to go and flame you online. So that's how we're going to break this all down. Okay. Let's start at the beginning. You got a bad review on Yelp. Ugh, this is so frustrating because often, now that doesn't mean that sometimes you don't deserve a bad review online. Okay. We're human. We make mistakes. And so sometimes we're going to drop the ball and we're going to deserve bad reviews online. That's just the reality of doing business. But sometimes you didn't do anything wrong and you still got a bad review. And I'm not picking on Yelp, although Yelp is frustrating because it, you know, filters some and shows some and there's this curious algorithm behind it all and I get all that. But this is in every review engine that you have. There needs to be a plan in place to deal with the conversation going on in these spaces, okay? So we want to start by with 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 the different uh, review engines, with Google, with Yelp, with Facebook. Those are kind of the big three. And then with local engines as well, you know, that can be sometimes yellow pages or sometimes there's local directories and things like that. Um, if that's available in your area, you know it. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, then it's probably not of concern to you, but there are local review engines that some of you need to pay attention to. But you have to create a process to know that reviews are being left. And so within each of these engines, you can set up notifications so that when a review positive or negative gets left, you as the owner or you know a manager that's, that's, that's overseeing operations in some capacity get notified that a review was left uh, online. Okay, so that's the first step is set up notifications so that you know someone said something about you. Next, and this, this revi- requires a, a little bit of intent and, and effort. But next, you want to graciously respond 
to all reviews. All. All reviews that you can, and some engines don't allow you to respond, but Yelp does and Facebook does, okay? So in all situations where you can respond, you need to respond. Now, if it's a positive review, somebody jumped on there and just said, man, you guys were awesome. I love what you do. We've been taking our family there for years, so and so on and so forth. Jump in there. Show some gratitude. Thank them. They took the time. They felt that you performed so well that they wanted to jump online and shout about it for everybody to hear. Thank them for that energy. They didn't have to do that. So jump in there and just simply say, man, I am so glad that you guys have a positive experience with us. We strive to make every interaction that we have uplifting and beneficial for your family. Thanks for sharing. Simple. Like, just jump in there. Be human. If someone's saying something grateful about you, it's just like if you got a, a compliment in person. If you got a compliment in person, do you just go back to what you're doing or you go, you know what? Thank you for that. I appreciate those kind words. That's humbling. Thanks. Do the same thing online. Now, when you get a negative review online, you also must respond. But, <laughs> and this is a big but because this is especially when it's unfair, this isn't the easiest way to respond. You must respond with empathy. You must give the impression that you care about your customers enough to be empathetic even when it goes wrong, even when it's not fair. You have to resist the urge to torch someone online. There's nothing to gain. Remember, everything is transparent. And lighting somebody up because of their, you know, their defamation of you or their inaccurate recollection of what was said or what actually transpired doesn't do you any good to put them down. It doesn't elevate you. It doesn't make your brand look more reputable. It just makes you look desperate and... um reactionary, which is just not the light that you want others to see you in. So there's nothing to gain by just lighting somebody up in your response to their negative review. People are smart. Okay. And what I mean by that is consumers are smart today because of all this transparency that we have and the consumer knows anything can be said. They're smart. They can look at a review and know whether or not that person just had an ax to grind they they can they can see that they can sense that now not 100% of the time but more times than not so that works in your favor so your response in an empathetic willing to serve them and make them right kind of way builds trust because you know everybody doesn't respect that you're going to have five star reviews across the board like you're not going to make everybody happy and that's not the expectation out there so respond in a way that goes, I am so sorry that your experience was us with us was lousy. I'm sorry that you felt the need that you needed to get out there and tell everybody about it. That, that must have been really frustrating and a really awful experience that you had with us. And I'm very sorry. Please, here's my contact info. If, if I can do anything to make this right for you, please let me know. Okay. And, and show that level of willingness to to do right by those that feel they have been wronged. That goes a long way in the browsing public, right? In the, in the, the consumer that's doing their research, that goes a long way in their eyes of going, what kind of brand is this? Do they understand that, listen, sometimes they're going to mess up and they have an intention to make it right. Or is negative out there just being ignored? If it's just being ignored, by default, there's a little bit more trust put into that. Because if you're not going to defend yourself, and and defense is the wrong word, but if you're not going to respond and engage the dialogue of this negativity, then you must be guilty. That's kind of the perception. And so you need to get in there and, and have the conversation, engage, and do it with grace and with empathy and with gratitude and that will go a long way 
to controlling the narrative that people see online. And then the last piece of this that is relevant to, um, you know, controlling this, uh, to controlling the narrative within the review engines and, and um, you know, managing this, this process is work with the platform policies to have erroneous reviews removed. Most people don't know this, but there is a set of policies that a person that's leaving a review must abide by in order to be able to leave a review. Now, in some ways, this is where the Yelp algorithm excels, meaning it can see some of these inconsistencies in reviews left. Uh, but in some ways, this also isn't seen. And a lot of the review engines allow you as the brand to determine what's erroneous and what's not, believe it or not. So you can look at the review policies for these different search engines, and you can then submit reviews that have been left on your review page as erroneous. An example of this might be uh, a person never had done business with you at all in any capacity. So if you can verify that this person had never done business with you in any capacity, you can submit that to the review engine and have those reviews removed. Did you know that? Another thing is if there are personal attacks being made within the review context, within the review copy itself, uh, personal attacks towards individuals, um, you can have remove reviews removed for those types of things. Those our basis for having reviews removed. So understanding what the policies are and then doing your own filtering and submitting reviews, um, flagging reviews for not following policies within the review engine, you can cultivate some of that negativity when they are exceptionally um, erroneous and, and, and inappropriate. And so you have some control there. And most people don't know that. So understand those reviews, dig in, read them, and then cultivate some of those reviews as they come through. Okay, the next thing to influence the online narrative of your brand that you must do is you have to create a process to cultivate positive reviews, all right? So reviews happen by default, right? Some people feel that they were... Uh, wowed so much that they wanted to leave a review. And some people feel that they were wronged so much that they wanted to leave a review. Unfortunately, the, the scales tip in the, in the direction of when someone feels wronged, they're more likely to shout it because they feel like they need to protect the consumer. And when people are served right, then, you know, usually a thank you to the front desk or to a manager or owner is about the extent of their promotion. And they're not as likely to go out there and share positive. So that's why negative reviews are so much more common than positive. You go, you look around and you go, gosh, I've, I've got all this positive energy and I have all of the negative times and the times that we messed up being screamed from, being shouted from the mountaintops. It's just kind of the way our nature works. And so you need to build into your environment, into your brand, into your processes, a way to cultivate positive reviews. Now, one of the ways that you can do this is by um, maintaining and managing a email database of those that are doing business with you. Now, I'm not gonna talk about an email database and how to manage that and what you should be sending them. I've done that. Uh, I did that podcast a few episodes uh, ago. And so if you want information on, you know, maintaining uh, an email database uh, and process for your inactives, your active clients, your active students, uh, your potentials, uh, go and listen to that. But one of the things that you can do in this process of email management is build into, uh, build into this process requests for new uh, positive reviews. And so one of the ways that you can do this, and I'll just give you one example. Let's say you have a trial experience where people can come and experience what it is that your brand does before making a commitment to in, uh, be an enrollment for you guys. And 
one of the things that I would do on that process, and you could do it right after the trial environment, you could do it a month after they enroll, okay? So you can do this in a couple of different places, but you can build into an email autoresponder a request of first off saying, hey, how was your experience with us? You know, thanks for coming in and taking this trial class. Hey, you've been here with us for a month. Hey, you've been here with us for six months. You can build it in at different processes. You can build them in at all levels. One right after the trial, one right after the month, one right after six months, one after the year. So you can build this into all the different levels. But build into this process asking them how their experience was with you. Hey, how was this experience that you had with us? And then based on their response, you can then encourage them to leave a review. So I'm not going to get into the technicality of how to do this, but you can actually set up your autoresponders so that if they, you know, you have two options. Yes, our, our experience was positive with you. No, our experience was negative with you. That if they click the no button, you're automatically notified and says, hey, this person said they had a bad experience with you. Make sure you reach out to them and see how you can help them. And if they click the yes button, they get a follow-up email that says, hey, I'm so glad that your experience with us has been positive. Would you mind going to, uh, and you can choose, you can swap this out. Would you mind going to Facebook? Would you mind going to Google? Would you mind going to Yelp and leaving a, a positive review for us? Managing our online reputation is big and we wanna make sure that the consumer understands what it is that we do you clearly have had a good experience. If you feel that it's been good enough that you would like to share that with someone else trying to do research with us, please go to this place and um, and leave us a positive review. Now, a quick hack here is one of the things that you have to be careful for, careful of, is linking directly to the review page. Now. This is just a quick asterisk because I learned this the hard way. Uh, for example, in Yelp, um, there's an algorithm in there that determines what reviews are worthy of being seen and what ones aren't. And one of the ways that they determine whether or not a review was genuinely left or not is whether or not the person arrived to your review page by a direct link, meaning uh, you sent them an email saying, here's the link to my page and please give us a positive review, okay? If you do that, Yelp, for example, knows that that was an inbound link directly to that page. What you have to encourage people do to do is, here's the link to Yelp. Go to Yelp, search our brand. Here's our brand name, search this and leave us a positive review. If it goes about it more organically, to that review, it's more likely to be seen. So just a quick uh, hack there. Don't leak directly to the page. Walk them through the process of finding you just like a normal consumer would do if they were wanting to leave you a review. If someone was wanting to leave you a bad review, they're not gonna have a direct link to your review page, right? They're gonna go to the internet, they're gonna type in your brand, uh, they're gonna go to Yelp, they're gonna type in your brand and then they're gonna leave you a review. So think about it in the terms of what's organic and natural in this in this process, okay? All right, so that was just a quick hack. So build into your email follow-up this process of asking people to leave you a positive review and you will have built in now this uh, this ability to have people leave you. And it, it's, it's not gonna be a huge amount because it's not gonna happen very often, but it'll be a trickle effect. You'll get maybe one at one month and maybe two the next month and maybe you'll go a month without any, but you'll have this process of having people leave you positive reviews and focus that energy on whatever review engine you're wanting to build or correct or manage. Okay, build it into your follow-up processes. The next thing is have signage at your front desk. Yelp and, and Google and some of these other review engines have signage stickers and have different things that they will send to you for free that you can put up in your business and says, hey, leave us a, leave us a review, uh, ba you know, tell us about your experience, go here. And you can put those signages up. So it just prompts people within your lobby um, while they're waiting for their kids to, to be proactive on that, okay? Now, that also means that if you have a lousy experience, they're gonna be they're gonna be prompted to do that also, but you should be cultivating your experience all the time and improving it anyways, okay? So you could have signage up that, that promotes leaving 
uh, reviews online when their experience uh, dictates that they should, okay? And um, and then the other thing is I would have your front desk people and you know your customer service that does emails and people answering the phones, those that are actually directly interacting with your clients to encourage people to leave reviews also. So this is uh, this is simply like you know a mom coming to your front desk and saying, "Gosh, my kids really enjoyed their class today. That was fun. Thank you for doing that." Your your staff should by default go. Thank you so much for those kind words. I love that. Hey, would you mind jumping online to Yelp uh, and leaving that positive review? Hey, would you mind jumping online to Facebook and just leaving a review about your experience today? That would really. Uh, go a long way into helping us build this brand here and what we're trying to cultivate. You'll find that a lot of people will say, yeah, absolutely, I'll do that for you. Now, a lot of them still won't, but some of them will. And it's another way that you can cultivate positive uh, energy online is to proactively ask those that are giving you direct feedback that they've had a, a good experience with you to go and leave a positive message. So build that into your staffing's communication that this is a part of what we do. When they hear uh, that they've had that someone's had a good experience, um, ask them to go and and tell about it online. Okay. So uh, so far we've talked about um, monitoring the review engines. We've talked about creating a process to cultivate positive reviews. Next. Controlling the first page of search engines in major um, in major search engines. Controlling the first page of major search engine search results when people are searching for your particular activity, business, or brand in your area is a major component to this reputation management. And one of the ways that you can do this is to partner with local uh, publishers and local media outlets to um, to have good articles written. Now, this, is, uh, this isn't that tough. This is actually very simple because as a executive producer of a show, whether that is uh, a news outlet, whether that's a newspaper, whether that's a local blog, whether that's a, you know, a, a Facebook group online, whatever that is for your local community, finding good stories, good messages, and things to talk about as you produce these different um, these different resources and programming and shows and and newspapers, they're always on the lookout for good messages, always. And so you can reach out to the blogs and the newspapers, to the news programs, um, and you can uh, create stories for them to talk about. You know, uh, you had good results in a competition. You had. Uh, an exceptional experience where a coach did something remarkable. You had something that was positive that took place within your facility. You know, there, you have all of these things going on. And I'm sure that there's times where something's happened and you go, man, I wish the news would catch wind of this. You can prompt that. You can call the television station. You can call the newspaper and be like, hey, I just wanted to let you know something that you guys might want to talk about in one of your upcoming episodes and one of your upcoming uh, releases and and get it to the editor and get it to the executive producer. And you can prompt this kind of conversation. They're looking for stories anyways. What happens when you do that, whether that is a news program, a newspaper, uh, a blog, uh, some sort of uh, local magazine, is that there is always an online record of this as well. Meaning if they do a news article in your local newspaper, they publish it online as well. If they run a story on the 5 o'clock news, there's an article on their uh, on their website about it as well with the little news clip. This is very common. And I'm sure you've seen some of this taking place in, in your local area. Well, what happens is when your brand is mentioned in those different articles and, 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 and different news spots, and now that there's a page that lives that has your branding on it, when somebody goes to the Google search engine and types in your brand or types in your activity 
in your community, right? Think about the searches that people do when they're doing research on you or looking for kids' activities or an activity like yours. There is results that, that, that pop up. And if you have, you know, your website that's going to be showing up the most of the time, especially if they're searching for your brand, and then sometimes right underneath it, you'll have the Yelp results, and then sometimes your Facebook page, and so on and so forth, right? But then you also have this positive news article by your local ABC station, and then this positive article um, by your local newspaper, and then this blog wrote a quick post about you. And okay, so you've got all these different options that are getting that are getting populated, you control the narrative that is that front page. So that, you know, if they see the review engines at three out of five stars, they may go, okay, you know, and there's only five or six or seven reviews in there, which is typically, you know, where you have a trouble, uh, a tough time controlling the the review rating is when you're down on low levels of reviews, you know, a, a single negative review swings those greatly. So even if you don't have the level of reviews that you want in some of those engines, you have other results on that first page that are speaking to your brand's authority and the other ways that they can get information from authoritative authoritative resources, right? I mean, if the news does an article about you, if the news does a news spot on you, there's automatically kind of a built-in trust factor that comes with that. Oh gosh, well, if the news is reporting about them, they must have, uh, this must be true. And so you you can sway public opinion beyond the star rating that is showing up on some of these by having these other, uh, these other, web positions locked down. And keep in mind, not only do you have, you know, two or three or four paid positions at the top, you also have multiple positions that are organic and that bubble up based on their authority. And so you can control that first page and that will help control the narrative of what people find when they research your brand. Okay. One last piece. The customer is always right. (sighs) Really? I mean, we've all heard that. Is the customer always right? I mean, I'm an owner too. And you know as well as I do, the customer isn't always right. And in fact, they're often not right. And that is really frustrating to try and manage customer interactions and customer expectations because they have often they have this really high level of excellence that they expect out of you and this really low threshold of tolerance now they don't expect perfection they really don't a good consumer doesn't but they do expect you to do the right thing so perception is reality in this process if they feel they've been wronged Even if you feel you did it right, the reality is they were wronged. Principle doesn't matter here. And trying to stand on principle actually gets you in trouble in in the realm of managing your online reputation. And I know that that is so frustrating. I've been there. It's maddening. It's legitimately infuriating sometimes. I get that. I really do. But the reality is perception is reality. So if they feel they've been wronged, you have to treat them that way. You have to weigh the value of being right versus the volume of their bad press. And there is a volume to everybody's bad press. You know, if someone has a positive experience, they may tell one person but if somebody has a negative experience, they're going to tell 10. And I, I know that that's crappy, but that's just the way it is. So when somebody has a bad experience with you or even the perception of a bad experience with you, you can't afford to just be like, you're crazy, you're wrong, leave. You just don't have that latitude. And so you need to weigh the value of being right versus the volume of their press. And believe me, the volume of their press 
is loud and it is influential, especially when it's negative. So you have to kind of check your ego, which is way easier said than done. Uh, I am guilty of, of pushing back when I should just bite my tongue and respond in humility. So I'm the first to say that this is not easy and often uh, I do this wrong. But as best you can, when you can, accommodate them. And I know that even that word can have a bad taste in your mouth, especially if they don't deserve it. (laughs) It is really tough to give somebody the right of way, to let them have their way when you know that they are in fact wrong. But if ultimately it has a small impact in your business, whether that's financial, whether that's emotional, whether that's stress, if the impact is small, it works in your favor to accommodate them. It does. I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying that this is the reality of our business landscape today. And if this is how you want to operate, which being online and having a reputation online, you no longer have a choice of today. This is just the reality of what you're going to have to do. I mean, really, what's the cost, right? If you push back, okay, if you push back and they're in the wrong and you're in the right, you know you're in the right, and you push back and say, no, I'm not going to do what you're asking. You are being ridiculous. You're being, you know, obstinate, whatever it is. You have to weigh what the actual cost is. What's it actually going to cost you? Not just in what are you giving up if you accommodate them, but what are what is it going to cost you if they go online and start screaming negativity about you? Okay, what's that actually going to cost you? What's the time that it's going to take for you to, to deal with somebody that's negative? If you just pacify somebody and then politely ask them to, to not do business with you in the future they still may go online. You may not prevent them from going online and leaving a positive review, but now, or leaving a negative review. But now when you go back and manage it, because you're, we talked about this earlier, you're managing all your negative reviews also, right? So now when they go online and leave a negative review, you now have the ability to respond, I'm so sorry that you feel the, that you felt the need to jump online and scream that we did you wrong. We did our very best. We even refunded you. We gave you extra credit. We invited you to come back for an extra class. Like it, it, allow, it gives you the ability to, to have a response that other people are going to look at and go, oh man, this business bent over backwards for these guys. That review guy is out of his mind, right? So doing what you can up front gives you the ability to then respond in, a, in, a, in an encouraging way online. And if you say no to that, What's the time? How many times are they going to come back and bug you? How big of a thorn in your side are they going to be? What's that time? What's that stress worth? What's the stress of dealing with that negativity? And what's the reach that they're going to have? What's the cost if you don't accommodate them? You, you, there is a cost to this. Even if there's not a cost to you giving them their money back and you keep that money, there's an inherent cost in the, the unintended consequence of not accommodating them, even if they don't deserve it. You have to be okay with them being right even when they're not. And that's yucky. It just is. But I believe there's more good people than bad. And yes, some people are out there to just take advantage of you. And yes, there are dishonest people. And yes, you're still going to get negative reviews. It's going to happen, but overall, you're just going to have to accept that this is a part of the game you've chosen to play, and in this online culture that we live, this is what it is, okay? Just remember, this is for the long-term health of your brand. It isn't just about this one experience. This is about the online narrative that you're painting over the scope of your brand's existence. And you got to remember, you're not going to make 
everybody happy. But you also have to remember your customer doesn't expect you to make everyone happy, meaning the customer doing research for you. If they go online and they see that you're four out of five stars, which means you may have had a one or two star review in there that's negative, you you may have had some negativity in there. That's pretty standard. Have you rarely, it, it's very rarely that you will see somebody, whether that's a product, a restaurant, a brand that has 2,000 reviews and they're still at a five-star rating. That is extremely rare. Extremely rare. It is possible. But even at that, if they've got 2,000 reviews and a five-star rating, if you go and look at that, there are still negative reviews in there. There's still one and two-star reviews in there. It just happens. You're not going to have 100% positivity across the board. But the good news is your consumer doesn't expect it. They just expect you to be human, to do the right thing, and to have empathy and grace and to do the best that you can with what you've been given. It's for the long-term health of your brand. You have to create a culture within your customer service, front desk, telephone, email, coach interaction, that you do right by the customer, even if the customer doesn't deserve it, and even if they're wrong. You must manage your customer interactions. This is a part of this game of managing your online narrative, managing your online reputation management, managing your online reputation. Now, there's one other piece here, and this is just something I'm going to mention real quickly. You can also hire reputation management companies out there. They're expensive, but if you are acquiring a business, for example, uh, that has had a history of uh, negativity and you're trying to turn it around, that can be a, a, a long, arduous process to turn that around and to, to redefine online customer experiences and expectations. And so you can hire firms out there that will do some of these things that will go to the review engines and will, um, you know, will, uh, will submit reviews uh, for policy violations. They'll create processes uh, to solicit positive reviews on your websites and something like that. You can hire firms to do this. They're expensive though. And this is definitely something that you can do on your own. But just know if you need help out there, there are firms that will help you manage your reputation. Managing your online reputation, if you want to survive in today's hyper-competitive environment, is not optional. It must be baked into your brand. It must be baked, baked into your culture. It must be something that you give intentional effort to cultivating. And if you do and create a process around controlling the narrative, you will win the online voice battle. You just need to create a process and be intentional about the effort and the energy to go out there and cultivate it and encourage it. Not manipulative, proactive to create influence and encourage those that are having the positive experience to share their voice too. Hopefully this was helpful today. There is a whole lot more to this topic, as you can imagine. If you have further questions or you need ideas or I said something that confused you, please comment down below. Let me know what it is that you would like additional help on. I would be happy to chime in there and help you navigate these waters. Thank you for joining us today. And until next time, take your brand to the next level. Thanks, guys.